Hello, everyone. Um, whilst um, Emma's just finishing getting set up, I'll do my little introduction. Um, my name is Sarah. I'm from Cult Pens. And we also have um, Becca here with us from Stadler um, for the workshop this evening, as well as obviously the lovely Emma. Um, tonight is a hand lettering workshop and journaling workshop with Emma, from, aka a Cornish geek. Um, and Emma is going to be sharing her passion for all things hand lettering and journaling, um, setting up your maze spread, I saw. Um, tonight you'll get the chance to ask questions to Emma, uh, learn everything you can about lettering and journaling. Feel free to ask many questions as we go along. We'll be handing over to Emma in just a moment, but um, first I've just got to do my little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we anticipate that this session will last up to an hour. Um, please get comfy. The session is being recorded and we'll make the recording available later on this week, hopefully on our YouTube channel. So if you miss anything or you want to go over anything in your own time, we'll have plenty of time to do that. Um, and obviously you get a chance to have another look at everything. Me and Becca will be switching our cameras off um, and our um, audio off for the duration of the session. Your cameras are all off. Um, but please use either the chat function, which everyone is um, saying hello in, or the Q&A um, to ask any questions. And we will, or I will temporarily interrupt Emma as we go along asking the questions live on the chat. Um, so if we're ready, Emma, if it's over, gonna be over to you. Um, I thought it might be nice if you wanna start off with a small introduction about yourself. Um, Otherwise, it's over to you. So I'm just gonna swap over the camera. I will uh, go, what about you? Oh, it's me. <laughs> Hi, so I'm Emma. I'm a massive stationary nerd. Um, some of you may already be following me. Um, so I am a massive pen and paper nerd, really into creative well-being with pen and paper. Um, during lockdown, I got really into creative journaling and learning to letter. And I started creating some online communities. So some of you might have followed my lettering and journaling challenges on Instagram. And then last year I moved to doing in-person workshops and it's been a really lovely way to get people to connect coming out of lockdown, getting people to share their own ideas and kind of breaking down the barriers of what people think creative journaling is. Because I think a lot of people would benefit from doing it, but they have ideas of how it should be and worry about doing it wrong. So it's all about breaking down those barriers and creating something that works well for you. So bearing in mind my Instagram challenges, next week I'm doing my journaling challenge. So what I do is I share a different prompt each day and encourage people following along to create a spread in their style and show it to their grid. And Saitler have been absolutely wonderful and have donated a lovely prize for this as well as this workshop. So if you join in with a challenge next week, you will be in with a chance of winning. One of, uh, put it across when we come to the next screen in a minute, but I've got a pack of 36 watercolour brush pens and I've got some lettering pens and pencils and fine liners and it's going to be a really lovely bundle. So whatever you're doing while you're journaling and lettering along tonight, make sure you take some photos and share them during the challenge next week and you'll be in with a chance of winning. So hopefully you have printed off some of your prompts, which I kind of put alongside those as well. So. When I started doing my workshops last year, somebody said to me, oh, I really love the idea of, just give you a sneak peek through my journal, of having all of these ideas and things set up. But what I'd really love is for someone to create something for me that I can just fill in. So what I started doing recently was creating my own templates, which makes it a little bit more accessible for people who want to be creative, but don't really know how to start putting pen to paper. So we'll go through a couple of these today. So I thought what we could do with starting with is a bit of lettering. So I don't know how many of you have introduced yourselves to lettering before, if you've got tips from anybody else, um, if you're a newbie, but for people who are new to lettering, I thought we could do a very basic introduction so that if you've got some of these really sexy pens, like these lovely stable ones, you can practice at home. So with lettering and brush pens, this is not like your traditional copper plate calligraphy where you've got the really thick chisel nibs. These are really lovely brush pens and you can do so much with them. Some really simple things to remember when you are lettering with a brush pen. So a couple of really basic rules. You can never go too slowly because when you're rushing through, when you handwrite, you're kind of lettering, unlearning everything that you've learned with handwriting. So where you would normally handwrite something and your pen would just carry on with your hand. 
when you're brush lettering, everything goes so much slower. And what we're going to do is go really thin and light with upstrokes and heavier with downstrokes. And once you start getting that really clear differentiation between them, that's the main thing. So if you've got a brush pen in your hand and some lovely dark red paper in front of you, I recommend having a go. So these are your thin upstrokes. And if you feel like they're not as thin as you like them to be, all you need to do is overcompensate on your downstrokes. You can never go too heavy. So you can see with these lovely pens, that really simply, you've got that really clear differentiation between your thick and thin strokes. And then the trick becomes putting these together. So what we have are some curves. So if you're going over, you're transitioning from thick to thin strokes. And likewise, going the other way, you're transitioning from thick strokes to thin strokes. And that is the basis of what you're doing. Once you master these thin and thick strokes, you're halfway there. Then with that in mind, we'll have a little look at this template that I produced. So my journal theme, because I like to theme each month, make them stand out a little bit, and it gives me a chance to be creative. It's based on the coronation and afternoon tea, especially for this workshop. So you can see here, what I've done is I created something on Procreate with really um, faint lettering on it so you, people can trace over the top. And in my workshops, people have told me that what they find really useful is that tracing bit initially, so they kind of get to grips with thick and thin strokes and then they've got space to freehand underneath. Well, I'm going to pull out a royal purple for this one. And what I'm going to do is just letter over the top of what I've got here. So spacing can be really tricky when you're putting a lot of words together, which is where going over somebody else's work can be quite handy to begin with. I just popped it into this handy little teacup. So I came across a quote the other day. You find that if you follow a lot of my challenges, I love a quote. And I find that with lettering, lettering like positive affirmations and just really lovely quotes can be really helpful. So the quote is, life is like a cup of tea, it's all in how you make it. I thought that was quite nice. If anybody's got any questions about brush pens or brush lettering, feel free to chuck them in the chat and I'll ask one of the ladies to shout them out to me. I also say to people in my workshops that the thing would come into things like that is that you're kind of learning somebody else's style. So I think once you kind of got into grips with those basic strokes and you know what you're doing with your alphabet, because I do go on to develop how you put those strokes together to make letters and then how you put those together to make words. It's nice to kind of think about how you want to put your own spin on it if you're somebody who really likes flourishes. Or if you'd rather keep things quite minimal rather than too loopy. We have two messages. One's just from a lovely lady called Claire that says, I've been following along your challenges for two years now and I love to see how far you've come. Hi, Claire, I love you, thank you. <laughs> Another one just says, how flexible are the brushes? So these are really lovely and they're really great for beginners. So the great thing about brush pens is I started trying to teach myself in the beginning, which was not helpful. It's only when I started following a lovely lady called Millie from Blink Lettering that I really started to understand it. <laughs> These brush pens are great because you can really push them down and not do any damage to them. The damage that comes with your brush pens is on the paper that you use. So I like to use nice smooth coated paper and um, I always make sure that I've got one of these radio pads handy for my practices. So I like to put a lot of stuff in my journal, but when I'm just playing around with things, then radio paper is lovely, it's so smooth. Also available have... from cold pens. Yeah, nice. Um, someone's asked, it take you a while to get the up and down strokes different because they can't really tell that much different um in yeah because trying to get that consistency is really tricky and you can see on some of mine and I always practice these when I've not done it for a few days it takes a little while to get some consistency in them some of them when you're trying to go quite light sometimes you might go too light and the line doesn't quite connect or it might be a little bit wobbly but um I was doing an intro session in person last week and I say to everybody because it takes an hour and a half to go through the strokes and the letters 
um, that by the end of the session that looks so much better than it did at the start of the session. Even if you just do a whole line or a couple of lines of them, your last one looks so much better than your first. And if your thin strokes aren't thin enough in the beginning, because it does depend on the type of brush pen that you use as well, because you can get various nibs and tips and the different consistencies and things. Just go extra thick on your downstroke, because you can come down like as thin as this. The more you push on or the more you pop it on your side, you can get some super thick strokes. So just overcompensate, just tighten it up afterwards. Does anybody have any other lettering questions? Because I'm keen to show you a few different techniques of things that you can do with different pens this evening. We have, what kind of tip are you using? Fine brush or thicker tip? So this stateler one, I um, don't know if you can see very well here, but it is quite a thick one. This is just a traditional brush tip. So if you compare that to the other end, because these are nice double-ended ones, that's your fine tip. And then that's your thick brush tip. The next question is, have you always had neat uh, writing or did you have to practice, practice, practice to have a certain style of handwriting? Uh, so the thing I always say to people is anyone can learn to do this, even if you think you have terrible handwriting. My, my background is in journalism. I learned shorthand as part of my journalism degree and my actual handwriting, if I could find an example of it here, is actually really scrawly and just not very attractive at all. Like my letter shapes are really weird. It's only the calligraphy that looks nice. So my headers and things like that, my actual handwriting is terrible. So if you think your handwriting is terrible, don't worry, because this isn't handwriting. You're technically drawing shapes and putting them together. So anyone can do it. But I have been doing this for a few years. Cool. Any other lettering questions? Uh, let's have a look. Um, that's the last one for the, about lettering at the moment. Okay, so I want to show you how epic these pens are because I know this is all about the tri-plus fine liners and we are going to come onto these in a bit. But St. Lodge is so many incredible products and there's loads of awesome things you can do with them. And if you're using these brush pens or the watercolour brush pens, I just want to show you a couple of epic things that you can do. Because they're water-based, there are so many things. So what you can do is a really cool tip-to-tip -tip blend. So you can get a really cool ombre effect. What I'm going to do is pull out two different greens in it. I'll show you what you can do with them. So on the brush ends. So here you've got two different greens. We've got this one and this one. So if you take your darker pen and put it on top of your lighter pen, and don't be afraid that you're going to wreck your nib by doing this. It's all good. And your lighter colour will go back to normal afterwards. Just transfer a bit of this. And what you can do, you see that the more I use this, the more it will go back to its regular colour. The tricky thing is knowing how much you transfer and see how long it's going to last. That's something that always takes a little bit of playing with. But you can see this lovely colour change and you can have a really lovely effect with it. You can do that with loads of colours. It's something that I quite enjoy playing with. But something else you can do because they're water-based is they always have these really nifty sandwich bags handy because they're really good for a bit of ink transfer. All you need to do is transfer a bit of ink over. And what I've done is I've printed some of my templates of watercolour paper. And if you're looking for really nice watercolour paper, I can't recommend Frisk enough. They do a mixed media pad, which is really good. It goes through the printer nice and easily as well. So then I've got a template here on watercolour paper. So um, when you're playing with water and heavier inks, radio paper is lovely, but it will not hold and it will just go and bleed and do all sorts. But you can do these in your journals anyway, because um, I always use a really nice thick paper journal. I use a Yop and Tom at the moment. So I'll show you this a little bit more closely in a moment. I just want to show you what you can do with this. So. You can take the ink off here and then just paint with it like it's a paintbrush and just paint. But the beauty of playing with it while it's still wet is you can get some really lovely blends and just watch things bleed together. 
Um, I'm a big ocean lover. I'm a big fan of blue and green well-being, and I think water's so good for the soul. So if you follow me on Instagram, you see that I have a lot of quotes with vitamin C in them, and I've got a lot of blue and green watercolour blends and things like that. That's just something that's really nice. So if you're doing my challenge next week, we've got a watercolour prompt for Wednesday. I like alliteration, so we're going for watercolour Wednesday. So if you have any of these lovely solar pens, so you can do it with any water-based brush pens. Get a bit passive, a ceramic dish or something, transfer your ink over and have a play. Anybody got any questions on blending or playing with ink or watercolour or anything like that before I move on to some more tips and tricks? And see how my desk becomes very messy very quickly. Uh, there aren't any questions at the moment. Um, I'll give people a little bit of a little bit of time just to type it. Um, someone said, "Can you varnish over the top when it's dry?" It depends on what you're doing it on. So what you can do is, you're, if you're doing stuff on ceramics and stuff like that, you can do wonderful things with paint pens and all sorts of stuff. Or you can do, but what I do is just I just leave things go as they are, kind of thing. Printer ink, so I can just see that chat flash up. No, it doesn't run with watercolour. If I hold this up a little bit closer, you can see that the only thing that's running is the ink that I'm putting onto it. So I find that that works really well. If it helps, I've got an HP printer and I do one of those pay-as-you-go ink situations with it and it works out really well because I print an awful lot for my workshops. What I'll do in a minute is just show you my journal as some more questions come in. So like I said, I use a Yop and Tom journal, which I really like. It's got really nice paper. So while I do like the Rodeo journals, this is just such lovely thick paper. It's dot grid, there's loads of pages. They give you a grid guide with it as well. So you can figure out how you're gonna draw your grids on your paper. And um, I always do a pen test in the back if I'm playing with something new. But I've played with so many hefty things in this. So what I did for February was I did some blending for some hearts. And although you can't really see too well because I've done so much on the other side, but there's no bleed through at all or ghosting. It just holds everything so nicely. So I know a lot of people like to have separate journals for various things. So one for their to-do list and one for diary keeping and that sort of stuff. But I tend to keep everything in one place now. I have a new one every six months or so. So I have all of my journaling and all of my lettering and all of those bits and pieces all in one place. And if you're worried about making mistakes in a really sexy journal like this, don't worry, because I dropped ink on my first page and thought, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. Start the next page, did it again. So mistakes are fine, embrace imperfection, just feel free to play and express yourself and be creative. Your journal is your space to do whatever you want with. Nobody has to see it. I think that's one of the biggest things for me personally with um, journaling was mm -hmm. getting over the fear of um, it looking perfect. Mm -hmm. I very much am the dreader of the first white page of the journal. <laughs> um, it's always the most daunting, I think, starting a yeah. new journal. But um, it's definitely something that takes a lot of time to sort of I quite often say to people to even skip the first page or just scribble through it, just get it out of the way, start at the back of your journal, like that first page is so intimidating, I love that. and it's quite often idea. I do just skip it. Someone said they start upside down at the back. <laughs> that's <Good idea>. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So that's just an intro to my journal. Um, like I said, I've got a challenge running next week, so what I do, I've been doing it for a couple of years now, and it's so lovely, we built up this wonderful online community of people like Claire, bless her, um, has been joining in for so long, and seeing everybody develop and just be so supportive of each other is really lovely. So there are certain things that I tend to do each month. So like I said earlier, I pick a theme for each month. So for April, I've gone for florals. Um, and then I always have some sort of tracker. Um, I track things that I know that are good for me. Um, so it took me, I've been living with anxiety and depression for quite a few years. It's taken me a long time to kind of build, build up that self-awareness and know what is good for me and what I benefit from. So I track things like my sleep and steps, but also self-care and looking after myself and making that a priority. 
And it was only when I was doing a mood tracker alongside that that I realised that obviously my mood is better when I get outside each day, when I've been drinking enough water and not too much coffee and I've had time to read or to create for myself. And I think that's really important. So what I've started doing for people in my workshops as well as creating these trackers, I find it really useful that um, just, to tra- just to take things off as I've done them, it gives me that accountability by having it there in my journal. And at the end of the month, I don't feel bad if I haven't done something because I know that I can reflect on that and see what I might need to improve for the next month. So there is that kind of thin line between you're going to get really obsessive over it and make sure you do it. I think that that is quite difficult to manage yourself, but hopefully you can find a way that makes it work for you. So what I've created here is a 31 image piece of paper. So if you want to use this to track something yourself, then do feel free. There's space here so you can create your key at the bottom. So I quite often colour code things. What you can do is you can number them for each day of the month. You can tick off when you've done something, colour it in to colour code it um, for your mood or whatever you want to be tracking. Um, Hopefully you'll find that useful. Any questions? I'm going to turn it take a breather. I was going to say, I was going to say, is it kind of a question, but it just says, um, do you use the the Ryder Carroll method? I used to. So um, for anyone who's not so familiar, uh, the bullet journal method became really popular I don't know I feel like I started it when my son was born so maybe like seven eight years ago um and I do incorporate little bits of that so what I do here you can see in my um life admin section here that I use the dot and I migrate things and I tick things off and those sorts of things but um it depends on what you want to do because Ryder Carroll is awesome I do recommend checking out his book and his website and all those bits and pieces um it's very structured and very minimal in terms of how he originally did it Um, And I think it's really useful if you're going all in with that method to be doing it for everything across your life. But because I like to keep my work separate to my other stuff, because I have a day job as well. I have a separate diary for that. I have a separate app on my phone that myself and my partner access. So we know everything that's going on with our son. We have colour coded school drop offs and pickups and all those sorts of things. So my journal is my space just for my stuff. So work-wise, I do put like some life admin stuff in there and I do have some calendars and I look at overviews of things, but I don't do it that traditionally way, which is why I find my creative journaling workshops really helpful because what I do in the introductory session is I introduce people to loads of different types of journaling. So we do mention Ryder Carroll and different things that you can be doing. I say loads of my old journals, loads of inspiring books, and then people can kind of um, pick a mix of things that work for them. I think it's really important to see loads of inspiration but don't feel like you have to do it a certain way and then take from it what you want. So I'm interested to hear what kind of journaling methods people do already use. It says, if you're new to journaling and lettering, journaling, Emma's, oh, this is a community on Instagram will help you. I started out so small, found Emma and then learned how to take care of myself while journaling and being generally creative. That's a lovely word. Oh, thanks, Claire. <laughs> That's so lovely. Yeah, I find um, I started journaling. I've always wanted to do it. And I started journaling when I joined Cult Pens. And I very much do it as my work Cult Pens journal. So for me, it's very structured with my week and my work to do's, things I've got going on. Um, I find that works best for my journal. So definitely I've found from starting out definitely find what's your groove and how you find it best to use it I'd recommend that enough like I was saying at the start of the session so many people can benefit from this and just from brain dumping and having space to be creative tracking habits and moods and even like one line a day and gratitude because I do my month to month I don't plan it too far in advance um I like it leave it quite open for me to get what I want from it when I need it so that I can just adapt it whenever I want to as well So I touched a little bit on self-care and one of the templates that I have created as well is a self-care bingo and people who come to my workshops will know that I throw these out like every month. I find it really important to remind yourself to make time for yourself, like rest is productive, self-care is not selfish, look after yourself, put your own oxygen mask on first. I can't say it enough, please look after yourself. So what I do is create a little bingo spread and I've done it in a few previous months as well. the way that I look after myself and how I track that I change it just to keep just to mix it up so like one month I did a self-care checklist I thought of all the things that I like to do for myself that are just for me so try not to think about things that are 
um, reliant on somebody else, like somebody else making you a cup of tea is really lovely, but maybe take yourself for a coffee date or go for a walk in the woods or by the beach or little things that I put down for myself, taking time to create, taking a whole day off because I have a day job and a side hustle and a small child. It's very rare that I take a whole day where I don't do something. Um, playing Mario Kart and things like that so just little things and then what I did was I created this template as well and I color coded it to see how many things I could do for myself each day and I found it really interesting that some quite a lot of these days I did three or more things so I read something I got outside I had a cuddle with a dog so that's always amazing and things like that so I created this bingo spread so hopefully you can think of some ideas pop them on here for next month things that you can do for yourself and that you know are good for you then tick them off as the month goes on. Has anybody got any tips for self-care accountability and make sure you're actually looking after yourself? I agree with you. I find a tracker. I have a little tracker for some things that I want to be uh, doing each month the best way for me to do it because otherwise if I don't do something like that then I don't hold myself accountable for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like if you put it on your to-do list you'll get it done so it's like you're going to be really anal about my to-do list I'm going to make sure I look after myself as well as tick off all this stuff so make it a task if you have to so we're going to but come on something to the... oh yeah, I was going to say something so satisfying about being able to tick off a to, like a list <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I know some people who start their to-do list for something they've already done or even write to-do list on their to-do list so they can take something off straight away. Once you start it, it's just so much easier. Any questions before I show you these fabulous fine liners? No uh, questions at the moment, hold on. I'm just um, having a look on messages. Someone said um, they set alarms that are named. You have earned a break now. <laughs> it's quite nice. I love I like that. that. <laughs> Someone else has said Emma's workshops have been a massive comfort in my life. So uh, thank, thank you. you. Alrighty, I'll show you these and then we'll come on to some more questions and other bits in a second. So these fine liners, I've got a massive box full. I cannot even show you like how big it is. Like one of these boxes these massive crates full of these fine liners they're amazing they come in ridiculous amounts of different shades they glide across your page so lovely it's ridiculous I've got um a smooth paper notebook that I use in my day job as well and just oh my god they just feel so good to write with you know when you get that really good pen and you don't want to do anything else so these are really lovely for handwriting with but there are so many things that you can do with them so I thought we'd do a little bit of a mindfulness kind of thing with this if you spotted it on my Instagram the other day, I just put this up as an example. So it's just time to sit down a pen and paper, let your mind wander, just create some lovely patterns. And if you've got one of these in front of you and some fine liners, I thought we could just have a go together. So it's always hard to think of something, so I'm going to copy what I did before because it's always hard on the spot. But it's all about just creating little patterns over and over again. And while we're doing this, feel free to throw some more questions and stuff at me because I can be thinking about that as I'm doing this. I feel like this is a good activity for when you're, um, you know, when people, sometimes when people are on the phone and you used to doodle. Yes. <laughs> That's what this reminds That's me of. a good one. And I have moments sometimes where I know I want to be creative or I know that I've got a spot of time to do something with and I know I want to be creative with it, but I don't really know exactly what I want to do. This is one of those really handy activities because quite often what I do with um, the blending of the brush pens and the watercolour pens is I'll create a background, just a really big ink wash with loads of fun colours. I'll do rainbows or something like that. And then I'll come back to it a bit later and letter over the top of it when I know what I want to letter. a lot of discussion in the chat at the moment just about papers so oh nice I love paper um, yeah um any sort of preferences on paper usage you've mentioned a few already but um yeah I thought you might want to chime in <laughs> yeah so um for writing just generally I really love radio paper I can't recommend it enough 
and the Frisk paper that I mentioned earlier. Frisk is just such an awesome company and they're always bringing out new types of paper and they do different thicknesses and for different art styles and they'll do like black paper and craft paper as well, different sizes. So I quite often got a pack of A5 watercolour postcards ready to go at any time as well. So that I can just be doing those washes and then popping something on afterwards and just super fun. I always say to people um, in my lettering workshops, I always recommend where I print my paper for from my practice sheets, because if you're going to print it at home on really naff paper that's not smooth, you're just going to wreck your pen and not have a fun time. And it's really going to put you off. So paper quality is so important. Interested to know what kind of journals people are using at the moment, actually, and what kind of paper you guys like. Um, we have a lot of different uh, people talking about um, paper. Um, someone's asked, would you recommend specific paper for shimmer inks to ensure they shimmer at their best? Oh, you know what, actually? I was playing with just some really naff B&M literary brush pens yesterday. And um, these, I don't know how well you can see it here, but if you have a look on my Instagram, I put a video up a bit with a light on it yesterday and it was super shimmery. So actually on this like 90 GSM radio paper, you can still get a really good shimmer. But um, if you're playing with metallics and like golds and watercolors and those sorts of things, then I do recommend playing with some black paper because the contrast is bonkers. And if you get a journal, I've not got one within easy reach at the moment, actually I do, one second. You can get some really cool club sandwich journals which come with different types of paper so you can see how your pens I just like to do loads of pen tests all the time you can see how things shine and vary on different types of paper so this one comes with craft black and white paper and it's just nice to see the difference and to play with different things in one place so I like to have various bits on the go so that I can have like a playbook and a journal book and a let's play with different projects kind of thing this one was really fun so you can see here Oh, so shiny. Because they would do some really cool metallic pens as well. So what I did with them, I think it might be in this black journal. So Radio also do a black journal. I was playing with this for them for a collaboration last year. And I was playing with um, the fun state the pens. So yeah, I do recommend having a good stash of different things to play with. so that their shopping list has started <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing I get that at a lot of my workshops as well it's like what are you doing to my bank balance I'm an enabler most of these things you can get from cult pens too they're very good radio stockists how many notebooks do you think you own because I probably <laughs> own too many <laughs> I had a really good clear out the other day. The thing with being a massive stationery nerd is people think a really good gift for you is a notebook. And for people who aren't fellow stationery nerds, they'll buy you like a really naff lined thing. And I'm really all about dot grid at the moment. So I've been gifted a lot of stuff or actually I donated a lot of stuff last year. So um, I live on quite a busy road and I can put things outside with a little help yourself thing and people walk past and at Christmas it was really lovely somebody put a Christmas card through afterwards saying thank you so much for what you did. I got Christmas presents for my family and blah 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 so everyone's a winner but I currently have I can see about 12 to the side of me and another 12 or so in front of me so and I work because I'm a content creator I work with loads of companies as well so I get sent loads of stuff to test and try out with as well so I've got loads of journals that have been started where I've done a pen test or a couple of test spreads but not actually finished so I always have one proper one on the go and then bits and pieces that I play with and dip in and out of depending on what kind of paper they've got. Someone's asked do you use faux lettering at all? What faux calligraphy? Uh, they've written faux lettering, but okay. Um, I assume... um, so in terms of lettering, there are so many types of lettering styles, and you can find loads of things on Pinterest and Instagram and books for inspiration. But brush lettering is just one type of lettering. Um, but faux calligraphy, I'm not very good at. Um, but it's it's the same sort of principle. So so you are just gonna excuse me with my tripod noises. Um, if you were going to be doing something, if you're going to write high 
you'd be doing the same thing where you just manually give yourself a thicker downstroke so you recognize where those bits are and just color them in so if you're doing things with like chalk pens and things like that like some brands are bringing out some really fantastic brush pen versions of things like that now like posca do do some brush paint pens now but if you're doing some chalk lettering and things like that that's why you want to be doing this kind of thing or if you're writing on ceramics with paint pens and those sorts of things so yeah i do use it sometimes but most of what i do is with pen and paper it's only when i'm not doing pen and paper that i do that um just say yes they meant for calligraphy <laughs> cool So this set here, which you can get from Colt Pens, is a set specially put together for the coronation where you've got your red and your blue and your uh, royal purple. And it's also got some lovely pastel colours as well. So spring is all about the pastels. I'm just loving those kinds of colours. So it's a really great selection here to play with. But these pens are just so versatile. You can get them in loads of different packs as well. As a station, we know they love it when someone brings out colour coded packs or like special limited edition sets and things like that. Someone's written in the comments. Have you been commissioned to write the King's coronation invitations? <laughs> Actually, um, my day job is in a nursing home and we're putting together a little coronation party. And I made a point of buying invitations for people and writing their names really fancy. When I gave out their invitations to them, they were just so excited about them. So there's a lot in the value of pen and paper and making people happy with cute little things like that. But the king himself has not been in touch and most offended. I'm also interested to know from the people in the room what you like to do with pen and paper yourself for mindfulness and your own creativity like what's your typical outlet are you a journaler or a letterer or are you looking for tips and tricks on things that might be good for you someone said they love letter writing an excuse to use my fountain pens and ink yes has anybody got a notebook that they bought that was really beautiful but they feel like they can't use it because it's too beautiful so it just sits there on a shelf 100 <laughs> percent. i used to do that all the time i'm like but it doesn't fulfill its life's purpose you must use it <laughs> lots of people agreeing i've uh, my friend bought me one once and I, I still haven't used it. <laughs> <laughs> I challenge you to use it this year, whether you pick it for a really fun project that you want to explore or if you're just testing things or please use it. Um, someone said, everything, uh, this must have been for the earlier question, was everything stationary? I journal lettering, watercolours, gouache. <laughs> nice i've got massive magpie syndrome so whenever i see something really cool on instagram that i don't really do i'm like oh my god i want to try that so um i followed somebody i think she's called emma block on instagram who was doing a lot of cool gouache stuff and i was like i really want to do that but i'm so invested in lettering and watercolor and everything else that um i need to pick one thing to focus on and try and build up skills in one thing before i move on to something else you say someone said i enjoy drawing but I have no confidence in hand lettering and I'd also love 
I also love all stationery. I think we all love all stationery. Yes. Um, we love to learn how to do nice lettering. Well, that's hopefully this workshop. Yeah. Will do that. Um, get in touch with me on Instagram if you're on Instagram. Um, I'm, I'd love to do more stuff like this. Like I said earlier, most of my stuff is in person at the moment and I love doing stuff in small groups. But I love it when someone thinks they can't do something or won't get a chance to do something. And then when they realise they can do it, like that's my favourite thing. Just enabling that and facilitating it. So, As a person said, I've been journaling to help be reflective. I would like to make what I do more creative than just writing and perhaps use lettering styles to highlight key points so I can learn and see differences when I look back over time. Yeah, that's what I like to do. I've got a drawer full of lettering that I was doing a few years ago. And I think having a record of your progress is really encouraging. I find that really useful. And I've got some old journals as well where I take them into my workshops and people can see. I'm going to see if I can grab a couple now. Where I used to be a lot more minimal um, and I would just handwrite things and throw in a bit of colour. I think the act of journaling itself is a really good place to start. Um, so think about what you want to get out of it. I was saying this to somebody in my intro workshop last week because they were a little bit overwhelmed by all of the ideas. I was like, just start by maybe photographing the things that you see that you like, make a note of things. Um, I have loads of washi tape and stuff people to play with as well. I was like, just tear off a few strips and put them aside for later because it's what you get down on the page and what that does for your brain and your mind and brain dumping and those sorts of things that's really good. And then you can build all the creative stuff on from that afterwards. So I used to start out just by brain dumping things and then using a bit of colour. This was before I started lettering properly. Um, used a lot of stencils. Oops, Daisy is a really lovely website that does awesome stencils. You can see that a lot of this is really minimalist before I started to become a little bit extra. But the lettering is so lovely because it means you can do things like headers or just have quotes there to reflect back on. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll skip a few pages ahead in my journal and letter something there that when I come to that page a bit later I'll be like oh if I can left myself a little note to encourage myself to do something and with trackers and things like that you can have them as minimal or as extra as you want to be you can just have a really simple calendar and then just colour it in or you can do something more elaborate you can use templates I think it's figuring out what you want to get from it and taking it one day at a time, playing with different ideas and giving yourself the freedom to explore and not thinking it has to be a certain way. It's really good. Doing vision boarding and scrapbooking and just playing with washi tape. There's so much you can do. We have two questions. Someone yeah. would like to know what the black and white craft journal was. It's not something we stock at Colt Pens, but... I might take a note of it just so that we can potentially get it in the future. Yeah, there are different brands doing these. So this one is an Archer and Olive one, and they don't stock very often in um, the UK anymore because of American shipping costs. Um, so you used to be able to get them from under their own trees. I think Nikki Supply Store did some, but they're really cool. But there are loads of indie brands that are starting to do stuff like this as well. And then Rodia do the black one. I think they may even do a craft one as well, but they're coming out with new products all the time. They're such an awesome company. So do keep an eye out. We also have, do you have any creative idols? Who do you look to for inspiration? Oh my God, so many people. I follow a ridiculous amount of people on Instagram and I'm always screenshotting things and fangirling over people and stuff like that. But Millie from Blink Lettering was such an inspiration when I first started. She was really helpful. Um, and I just follow loads of people. The people who've gotten involved with my online challenges and communities are so bloody lovely and watching them develop their skills and start to get their own um like campaigns with brands and see them being used for their content that they create is just so awesome so people like Claire and Gemma so it was Gemma from Gem Plans and Letters and just all of those people who you've seen start to journal a couple of years ago and just find things that work for them and then start to build their own community on the side of it it's really awesome we said when brush lettering do you pre-write your phrase with pencil or just go for it I'm a bugger for just style. freehanding stuff. And when I freehand, it's not good because I mentioned earlier about spacing inside that teacup. It's so difficult. So you can see here that um, I started to letter something and realised I didn't have enough space for it. And I was like, it's fine. Turn the page, start again. It's all good. But yeah, because I do a lot, the stuff in my journal is dot grid. So at least I can see where my lines are, but spacing and things like that, I'm terrible with. And if I'm doing anything on a watercolour page, 
where I haven't got a dot grid and I'm freehanding it, then I will sometimes pencil lines in and stuff like that as well. But if you watercolor over some things, you can always erase the pencil line underneath afterwards. So I do have, and I wonder, oh, it is next to me. I feel like I've been actually really surprisingly organized. I've got one of these really handy laser pointers. So I can just put a line across my paper and then letter over that, which is quite nifty. That was something like a tenner on Amazon. It's really handy. Second half of the question was, um, how would one create their own style or alphabet? Oh, that's so difficult. It's something that I've really struggled with myself and it does change a little bit all the time, depending on my mood. Um, and I will recommend Millie from Blink Lettering again because she's got an online course where you can take it and turn it into your own style. So I quite often find, and it does depend on my mood, it's really weird, I'll show you an example. I um, change how I space my letters apart. So I really like writing the word joy because it's just nice and loopy. So sometimes I'll write it like this, but then sometimes I'll just really space things out. If I'm doing single words, it's quite fun to play with things like that rather than keeping them quite condensed. Um, and sometimes when I'm teaching people, I can see even when they're doing that initial worksheet that I do with them, I've taught them through the alphabet, you can see they've already got their own style. So sometimes I say to people in the moment when we are going through those initial letters, if there's something that suits your handwriting style that you feel is you, do feel free to adapt it. So some people are quite italic or quite graphic and really slanty with their writing. And you can see that really early on. So I think the more you can personalize it and make it feel like yours, because sometimes when you are learning from somebody, it does feel like you're just copying them a lot of the time. And that's something that I was quite aware of early on. Um, someone's asked if you could demonstrate the line, the pointer. Yeah, of course. Where I find out that it's run out of batteries. There you go. So you can have it apart and you can move it around really easy. It's just such a nifty thing to have on your desk. And if you have a look on my Instagram link tree, I think I've got a link to it on Amazon as well, just so you can find it really easily. But it's a Black and Decker one. Be a DIY as well. <laughs> yeah. See, I do none of that. So it's really quite hilarious if you know me in real life that I've got something tallish in my office. Those were the main things that I wanted to show everybody. And if there's anything else that you want demonstrated, do let me know or I can take any more questions. Oh, one question. What's the name of the person I recommended earlier for finding your own lettering style? Uh, so you can find her on Instagram under Blink Lettering. She does really cool online courses. And um, when I learned from her, so I was talking earlier about these basic strokes and how the strokes pen into letters. What she did was you practice one stroke a day, then one letter a day and really build up that muscle memory and keep repeating things. So I say to people in my lettering workshops, just take five minutes each day to practice. And there are shapes that I hate as well. So I say to everybody very clearly that I hate the oval. I find it really hard to make it consistent. It's really weird. But when you have your join here, you're quite often just going to cover it up anyway. But I have whole pages in old journals where I've just done this over and over and over again, trying to get a really consistent shape out of it. Someone said, you just made me realise that a blank wall is a perfect space for enormous calligraphy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, above my desk up here at the moment, what I've got is a wall painted with chalk paint that when I started working from home during lockdown, I would just put a load of stuff on it. My partner said to me the other day, like, you're kind of using this for different reasons at the moment. You don't really use it like you did originally. Why don't we turn it into, we saw this thing on YouTube a while ago where somebody had written out like the first page of Harry Potter on their wall. It's like, why don't we turn it into something like that? And I was like, oh, so now I'm thinking about all these things that I could put on my wall instead. That sounds amazing. Um, someone said, I hate C, especially as a capital. So maybe it's <laughs> worth um, showing us how you would write the letter C. Yeah, so everybody has letters that they hate. I hate the letter K. Um, so I think a lot of my problem with it is when we do um, the intro to calligraphy and do the different letters, I always remind people that you're going to have an entry stroke and an entry stroke, so it's going to connect to something else. So it's this little bit here that throws a lot of people. It's when you transition coming out of it to a lighter stroke and then think about how it's going to connect to something afterwards. So just these things to bear in mind. 
And when I do my intro, I very rarely introduce capitals because of what, what I do. For some reason, I do it all lowercase. But I do have a separate sheet that I show people which has capitals. But some people are like really epically flourishy with their capitals and do all these loops and squiggly bits and stuff. And that's just not my style. So I keep mine quite minimal. And then when I do do the capitals, I think actually that does look too minimal for me. But it's basically half an oval, isn't it? And it's about starting it at the right point. So some people don't have enough of a bit on the end here and don't come out enough here. So it's thinking about where you're going to start and end it. Um, so I find it really hard to make it consistent. Yeah, consistency is really tricky. And that's why you want to just like do pages and pages of them. Just try and do it over and over again. And when you see one that you really like, um, just see if you can replicate that. Because I find that when I'm doing ovals as well, some of them will be more egg-like, some of them will be a bit rounder. And I think about what I like about it and then I'll try and do that again. But it is just that repetitive motion. The more you do it, the easier it will come. Nice. So we still have about 10 minutes left of this workshop. So if there's anyone has any questions or anything you want to see, anyone else got any letters that they struggle with, uh, let us know and then we can do some lettering. I'm going to show you a nifty trick, actually, because I came across this on Instagram the other day where I was inspired by somebody else. I was like, oh, actually, that's really cool. So when I'm doing words, everything kind of stands on its own. And I've been thinking about how I can make things look a little bit nicer. But just the way you cross your T and bringing that into something else, I found that really fun. So when you're playing with letters, just think about how you can make things flow a little bit nicer as well. This is one of my favourite things, like the is just such a boring word, but the way you can make your T flow into your H is really fun. And I really love this bright pink, by the way, it's such a vibrant colour. Lighting is not so great on this, but I promise you it's lovely. I just caught a little bit of that chat there at the corner of my eye. I had somebody who came to my intro to calligraphy last week and she used to teach kids how to do handwriting at school. And literally everything that we went through went against everything that she knew before. So, you know, you got like the magic pencil and it goes up, down, round and flick. She wanted to put a flick on the end of everything. But because she's used to just flicking and it just comes out like this, this hasn't got the thin outstroke. So I find the letter I is a really good one to practice over and over again, because you're practicing this bit at the end and making your speed consistent all the way through and keeping that nice and light. And it's about picking your pen up each time you do a separate stroke as well. Because like I was saying earlier, when you're handwriting something, your pen just keeps running along the page and that's it. But when you're lettering, you need to reposition your hand each time because otherwise you're just kind of going back on yourself and making it really uncomfortable. And so that they love the noise of writing, <laughs> the noises of the pen. I'm really aware of how weird it is. And it's just, yeah. I'd like a little bit of that as well, it's cool. But I do recommend that you pick these up and you just play with loads of fun blends and tip the tips and add in some water. And there's just so many things that you can do and play with, it's awesome. So if you're handwriting for your journal, like doing some brain dumping and just free writing a bunch of stuff, if you're doing morning pages or gratitude, lovely, so many color combinations. If you're doing fancy headers and things like that, grab the, um, the brush pens. And then this watercolour pen set is just amazing. It's like 36 different colours. It's awesome. And remember, if you join in with my challenge next week and share what you're doing, what you've been doing this evening, even if you're not using stapler pens, it's whatever you've been creating with. It's absolutely cool. Um, tag me and use the hashtag next week and you've got a chance to win one of these. One of these, one of these, a load of pencils and sharpener and rubber as well. So it's a really epic prize. Amazing. Someone's asked, do you have any hand exercises for stretching? Because the hands get stiff after writing. <laughs> That's a lovely one, isn't it? Because um, my intro is over an hour and a half. You do get a little bit like this and you just want to. But no, I don't have any exercises. But I should really think about that. Grab a stress ball. Just keep it on your desk and give it a good squeeze. Also said that they're going to use one of the unused special books to just hand letter quotes. Yes, love obviously it. inspired someone to get out the uh, <laughs> two nice to use notebooks. 
that's what I find really helpful because you learn to letter and you want to do something but you're not quite sure what to do with it so I think just writing really positive words and quotes and things like that is really good and lady say the other day her partner said why do you need postcards and prints that say you are worthy you are enough it's like well actually sometimes we need reminders and I think writing that out the process of writing it reminds yourself when you come back at it later again then yeah you're reminded again never had too much of that messaging no I agree with you there that's um do you love positive positive affirmations yes positive thinking Does anyone have any questions? Um, you've got a few minutes left. Oh, someone else is inspired to get out their special <laughs> notebook. Note. <laughs> Find your favorite pen as well. Like it can be anything like, cause everybody has like that one pen they love to handwrite with, like what they do their meeting notes and like with the fine liners at the start, like just like, like whatever through butter and stuff like that. Like if you've got a special fountain pen or something like that, get it out. and all the colours as well fun to experiment with all the different colours yeah and the beauty of things like these as well as you can just watch them all blend together and see it do really cool stuff so like what I was doing with the hearts the other day on this you can just put the different inks on your bit of plastic or ceramic or whatever and just watch them all bleed into each other it's so fun even just pen testing things like that is awesome Someone's asked if they want to improve their handwriting. Any practice books slash sheets you can recommend? Um, so I would recommend doing Millie's courses, to be honest, and she does really good workbooks. Um, what I will do is find a way to upload my intro worksheets to a blog post, I think, and then link that in my link tree. So keep an eye on that in the next couple of days. And I'll make sure that my intro sessions are accessible for you guys so you can have practice at home. That's lovely. Um, obviously, uh, links will be provided in emails to this workshop and um, including your socials and things. So obviously, we'll yeah, make we'll sure attach that, it to that as well. Yeah, we'll make sure we can send out everything to everyone um, that signed up for this evening. And um, we'll make sure it's in the YouTube links and stuff as well. Um, we're pretty much at the end of the session now. So I'm going to. Just I'll reappear. <laughs> say hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I just want to say a massive, oh, everyone's sad that it's ending. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone that's joining us this evening. And obviously a massive thank you to Emma. Um, really grateful for this evening. It's been really nice to have a chat um, and to learn about lettering. And I did post at the beginning of the session all the PDFs to those um, sheets. Um, but we'll make sure that the links are in the YouTube video as well so you can grab them whenever you need them. Um, as I said, this has been recorded, so it will be up in the next couple of days. Um, you can go over everything. If you've missed anything, um, you can rewatch and learn in your own time, which is great. Um, this is the end of the session, so we'll be closing the webinar shortly. Um, we will hang in here probably turn the, the cameras off and just mute ourselves but just in case there's any last minute questions you might have um we're happy to just sort of hang around for a couple of minutes again just want to say thank you to everyone we'll make sure we put all the links to socials and things so you can find emma i did put them in the chat earlier um but yeah i hope you had a lovely evening lots of comments coming in thank thanks so much thank you emma oh there's lots of lovely comments in there Thanks, everyone. It's really lovely. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. It flew by. And Charles will be in touch shortly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll I don't think he can one. afford me. <laughs> yeah. Again, thank you very much for everyone. We will um, we'll be ending this now. We'll, said, well, I'll hang around for a minute in case you have any last minute questions. But mostly everyone just says thank you. Have a lovely evening. And the next workshop is in a few weeks' time. So hopefully you can join us again. <laughs> Bye.